Thanks for joining us at XM.com for the Weekly Outlook. I'm Christina Marujos and joining me today is Lead Investment Analyst Raf Boyajian. It's good to see you, Rafi. We'll be having a look at the upcoming week, which is going to be quite busy with two central bank meetings and, of course, a lot of data releases. So let's get right to it, starting with the Reserve Bank of Australia, which meets on Tuesday. It will be interesting to see, Rafi, how policymakers address the weak inflation data we saw recently. Are we likely to see any change in policy and how could that affect the Aussie? Well, Christian, we're not expecting uh, any changes from the RBA. Uh, so perhaps the, the the bank's quarterly projections that's due uh, a few days later on Friday might attract a, a bit more attention. Uh, now, I'm glad you mentioned the, the inflation data because uh, although we did see inflation ticking up uh, in the first quarter of this year, uh, it's still well below the RBA's uh, target band of 2 to 3 percent and uh, the numbers overall were far weaker than expected uh, and uh, more importantly core inflation was uh, very low in fact one of the measures of core inflation hit a record uh, all-time low uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see how the RBA uh, how worried the RBA will be uh, about uh, core inflation remaining so weak uh, overall though the RBA uh, the Australian economy hasn't been doing too badly in fact uh, the labor market has been recovering much faster uh, than uh, anyone expected. Uh, so we could in fact see growth projections perhaps being revised slightly up, um, even if inflation forecast perhaps might get revised a bit uh, lower. Um, now, uh, despite this uh, decent rebound, we could yet see the RBA extending its QE program later uh, in the year. Uh, and uh, for now, we have those weak inflation numbers uh, to warrant uh, a dovish stance on Tuesday. Uh, Australia also has been rather slow on the vaccine front. Uh, and we, we do have a spike in virus cases in, in the region, such as in India and in Japan. So that might also um, uh, warrant uh, some caution out of the RBA on Tuesday. Uh, so if we do see uh, a dovish tone once again from the RBA, that could weigh on the Aussie. On the whole, though, uh, we shouldn't, we're probably not going to see a huge reaction in the Forex markets uh, for the May policy meeting. Now, let's stay in the central bank theme for a little bit because markets are anticipating a brighter economic summer for the UK with a successful vaccination program going flawlessly so far which of course has paved the way for a gradual reopening of the economy. Is this optimism likely to be echoed in the Bank of England, which meets on Thursday? So uh, like the RBA, we're going to have new quarterly projections from the Bank of England on Thursday. Uh, and uh, as you said, you mentioned the uh, flawless vaccine rollout and uh, reopening. So all of that will probably lead to an upward revision in the GDP forecast by the bank uh, next week. Uh, now, inflation in the UK has also been somewhat weaker than uh, expected uh, as well. Uh, so again, the, the, that signifies there's no rush to tighten monetary policy. However, uh, given the strong PMIs we saw for April and the fact that the UK does remain on track to reopen its economy and it's ahead of the, the most, uh, most of its competitors in terms of the vaccination uh, program, uh, so the, the, the outlook is looking very strong for the UK economy in the second quarter. Uh, and there is speculation that the Bank of England uh, might uh, next week uh, announce a reduced pace of asset purchases. We saw from the Bank of Canada uh, earlier this month that the Bank of Canada w has become one of the first central banks to reduce its QE and we could get the same from the bank. Now that doesn't mean that they're going to end the QE anytime soon. In fact, there's still a chance that the Bank of England could extend uh, its QE beyond 2021. Uh, but for now, given the, um, our, the brighter economic outlook, uh, we could see some moderation in the pace of QE and that will probably boost the pound. Uh, now, there's a few risks to have in mind for the UK. In fact, they're mainly political risks because, uh, of course, uh, although we got a Brexit deal, there's still some problems with that deal. Uh, and the current agreement, in fact, is causing problems uh, with trade, not only with the EU, but also between the, uh, Britain and Northern Ireland. Uh, and so that could lead to problems down the line. Uh, but more importantly, uh, specifically uh, about next week, we've got the Scottish uh, parliamentary elections coming up, and we're also going to have local elections in England uh, as well. Uh, now, there's a good chance that pro-independence parties in Scotland will gain a majority, uh, and that will 
um, basically strengthen the independence voice in Scotland. Uh, now, if you do see some, you know, uh, that being the outcome of next week's elections, uh, that could potentially hurt the pound. Uh, also, uh, as far as the local elections in England are concerned, there's uh, the Boris Johnson's government is. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's a lot of sleaze, sleaze allegations against his party and him specifically as well. Uh, so we're going to. So if we do see uh, the Conservatives not doing too well in the local elections, that could be a sign that those sleaze allegations are starting to hurt uh, his popularity. Mm, I see. Now let's turn to the data and have a look at the U.S. Non-farm payrolls for April are out on Friday. Markets are anticipating another stellar report, Rafi. Do you think this will push the U.S. dollar even higher? Well, we probably uh, will see some reaction from the jobs report as usual, but uh, given what we heard from the Fed uh, in the past week, uh, that once again uh, Jerome Powell reaffirmed uh, the Fed's stance that they're nowhere near talking about uh, tapering, uh, so any reaction will probably be rather muted. Uh, so we are expecting another strong report. Uh, we could see uh, perhaps uh, NFP gain of uh, 1 million or maybe just under 1 million uh, and probably the unemployment rate falling below 6%. Uh, percent. Uh, and so obviously a stronger than expected uh, report will probably lead to a bit of a spike in Treasury yields. Uh, but on the whole, uh, given that the Fed isn't um, likely to change course anytime soon, uh, even if you do get a stellar report, uh, it's probably going to have not a huge impact uh, uh, in the currency markets. Mm. And now staying on the data front, we also have jobs report out of Canada and New Zealand this upcoming week. What should we expect? from these numbers and are the loonie and kiwi likely to gain on that? Well, it's been a good week, a good run for the loonie following that Bank of Canada policy meeting uh, and recent data from Canada has been rather strong. The labour market has recovered much faster than expected. Uh, however, uh, for the April jobs report from Canada, it will probably be weaker than the, uh, the, the previous ones. Uh, in April, the, we did see new lockdowns uh, in some regions of Canada. Uh, so this could have uh, this would probably have caused a bit of a setback uh, in the recovery. However, Canada has been catching up on the vaccination front. Uh, in fact, now it's ahead of the EU. Um, and so basically the outlook is looking much better. So uh, it's uh, probably, uh, we probably won't be getting lockdowns after these ones. Uh, and uh, so investors will probably shrug off uh, any disappointing uh, jobs numbers out of Canada. Uh, the, the only concern is that perhaps we could see some profit taking for the loonie from a weak report uh, given the, the strong gains it's had in recent days. Now turning to New Zealand, uh, we're also going to get the job numbers uh, there as well. Uh, now we did see some weakening in the economic uh, data earlier this year because we had some lockdowns in New Zealand as well, but uh, things should have started to improve from uh, March. Uh, now it's going to be difficult though to get the full picture uh, from the quarterly jobs data because New Zealand publish, publishes quarterly uh, numbers. Uh, so uh, it's going to be, might be a bit hard to see how, how much of a strong rebound there was in March. However, uh, if we do see much stronger than expected uh, drop in the unemployment rate, uh, then uh, that would be a sign that things did start to recover, that the, the economy did start to pick up uh, after the lockdowns ended towards the end of the uh, first quarter, uh, but if we do see uh, a weak uh, unemployment rate, then that would probably be a sign that uh, the, the lockdowns had a much greater impact than anticipated. Uh, now, as far as the New Zealand dollar is concerned, it been, has benefited from the weaker uh, US dollar. Uh, so, so uh, if we do see uh, more concrete data coming through, then that rebound uh, should probably uh, strengthen. Rafi, thank you for joining me today. This was the weekly outlook. Thank you for watching at XM.com.